Okay, in this video, we're going to be talking about using Venn diagrams. So let's go and get started. Now, if you have been a high school student for long, and which I believe you have, um, you have seen a Venn diagram, at least in um, language arts. And maybe science, but mostly language arts. And so what we have here is we have two items in which we are being, or that are being uh, compared here. Now, notice that each category is always going to be represented by a circle. And since you guys have dealt with Venn diagrams before, I'm going to kind of go quickly on this. So here you have category A, which is represented in this circle, and then you have category B, which is represented in this circle. And so, like, for example, um, where you have overlap here is where the two categories share characteristics. And so it could be numbers, it could be letters, it could be anything, but it's where they share characteristics. So let's, uh, let's do a quick example. All right, here's our quick example. In category A, we have these groups, or we have these letters, A, B, C, D, E, F. And in category B, we have these letters here. Now, what I'm going to do is every letter that is represented in category A well, actually, I, let me restate. The easiest thing to start off with is by looking to see what is shared. And so if I look at my uh, groups here, if I notice that D, E, and F, which are right here, they are shared. So that would be in this shared spot right here where the two circles overlap. And A, B, and C, notice A, B, and C are not represented in category B, so I'm going to put A, B, and C outside in this circle here. And notice that there is a separation between what is shared and what is just in category A only. And so I know that this is separated. And then, of course, G, H will be right here. So that's how you do it. Now, let's go ahead and uh, deal with a couple of... Um, uh, problems that you guys are going to see. All right, now use the following information to fill out the diagram. All right, so what we have here is 20 people say yes, 40 people say no, and then 10 people say yes and no, and then six people say neither. All right, so let me zoom this out just a little bit so we can see everything here. All right, so it says here that we are dealing with yes and no. So I'm going to put the yes circle right here. I'm going to put the no circle right here. Now, you might be asking, why do I want to do that? Just because I want to. <laughs> it could be set, it could be switched. It doesn't matter. All right, 20 people say yes. Okay, 20%. Now, um, the thing that I believe would be easiest for you is this. All right, I had to stop the video, so uh, I kind of forgot where I was at. But uh, the easiest thing that would work for me to figure this out is two things. Figure out who is in the neither section, and then figure out who is in the shared section. Now, we haven't necessarily talked about the neither section, so let me go back and talk real quick. You have a shared area, and then you have the neither, which means uh, it's neither in both circles. I mean, that's pretty self-explanatory. All right, so let's go back to this here. And so start with the shared section, because that's always easiest. That would be 10, and then the neither will be 6. Okay, that helps you out greatly. Now, the next thing is the 20. Now, what students are going to do is they're going to want to write 20 here. And that's actually incorrect because you misunderstand the purpose of a Venn diagram. In the circle, 20 total people say yes. So that means in this entire circle, 20 total people. Well, if you're dealing with 10 people that say yes and no, that means there's, that's 10 that's already accounted for for the 20, which makes this 10 as well. All right, and using the same concept, this is my no circle. So the shared part of the no circle as well as everything by itself is still part of the 40 that say no. So what that means is there's going to be 30 people that say no specifically, and 10 of them say yes and no, okay? That's how you set it up. Now, if you were to add all this together, meaning how many total people uh, make up this survey or whatever, you add all the numbers in here. I'm writing with my mouse, so it's going to look a little weird, and that gives me a total of 56 people. All right, let's try another one. Now, 
here's a little different because now I don't know how many people say no. I don't have that information. But what I do know is how many people say yes. I know how many are shared and I know what now the total number of people are. So once again, start with how many people say neither and how many people say both. And so that would be 20. And how many people say neither? That would also be 20. So I'm going to put that on the outside of my Venn diagram. And now from here, how many people say yes? Well, 100 people say yes. So once again, in my yes circle, which I'm putting right here, and of course I need to write what this is. So this is my yes circle. This is my no circle. So if 100 people say yes, and if 20 people already say yes and no, it's shared, that means I'll have a difference of 80. Okay. Now the last thing I need to talk about is, uh-oh, how many just specifically say no? Well, this is actually pretty easy when you're given the total number of people. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 190 and I'm going to start subtracting all the numbers I know in my Venn diagram. So 80 people say yes, 20 are shared, 20 are neither. So that means my answer, I believe, is 70. There you go. So there's my answer. All right, let's try one more. All right, so here's the next one. You have 50 people say yes, and I wrote this with my mouse, so it's going to look a little weird. 80 people say no, 10 people say yes and no, and then lastly, 10 people say neither. So I'm going to make this be my yes column, this be my no column. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to ask you to pause the video and figure all this stuff out, and then we're going to play it again. So I'm going to give you three seconds to pause it. Three, two, one. All right, here's your answers. 10 people say yes and no. 10 people say neither. This would be 40. And lastly, this would be 70. You add all this up together, it gives you a total of 130 people. Okay? Now, here's what uh, we're going to do. We're going to go back to this question here. And let me kind of clean this up for a second. Now, the question I'm going to ask is dealing with probability. So when I deal with probability, I'm looking for the probability of yes. All right, so what is the probability of people saying yes? And so in order to do that, probability is the, it's going to be a fraction, and that is the uh, fraction of favorable outcomes over the total outcomes all right and so and this is going to be in fraction form so favorable outcomes over total outcomes so um, how many people said yes meaning this is the question how many people said yes that's what I'm looking for how many people said yes there was a grand total of 100 people that said yes so because I'm I'm not I don't care about what's shared. All I want to know is who said yes. And so that is going to be 100. So it's going to be 100 over the total number of people, which was 190. Remember, it was in your directions. And the answer is 190. And, of course, you would reduce down. But let's say if I was to ask a question of probability of yes, what if I change it to probability yes and no, meaning in other words, what is shared? That's what I'm asking for. All right, so once again, looking into my uh, VIN chart, this is 20 because this is shared, so that'll be 20 because that's how many favorable outcomes I have over the total amount of outcomes is 190. And that's how you figure out probability. If you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you for watching.